What is going on guys? Welcome back to Pat Outdoors. Today we're going to be working on this Tesla CyberQuad ATV. This one actually belongs to my coworker Anton and it's currently disabled because he turned in the controller to Radio Flyer to get a full refund for the recall. Now the whole purpose of this project is to get this thing back on the road with as much speed as possible on a $250 budget. Now, last time I took this thing out, I was only able to top it off at 10 miles an hour, which I personally think is a little too slow for an adult to have fun with it. But considering it has rubber tires, a disc rear brake, suspension, and the metal frame, I think it makes a good platform for modifications, similar to my Razor MX650s, which both go 50 miles an hour, but those both run on a 72 volt brushless motor setup which is obviously gonna cost a lot more than what we're doing to this thing. The main limiting factor of this setup is certainly gonna be the original battery, which he wants me to retain. This one is made by Radio Flyer, and it is lithium, but it's 36 volts, which is gonna limit the amount of RPMs we're able to get out of the motor. But it looks pretty sleek. I like how it fits back here. And it's also $500 from factory, so we might as well get some use out of this original one. Now, if this was my bike, I personally would like to get a 72 volt, 30 amp hour battery and jam it in here since there's a lot of space in the center of the chassis. But this is his build and we're gonna do exactly what he requested. Hopefully we can get at least 20 miles an hour out of this thing. I also really like the design of the charger that came with this battery, but while we're letting this charge some more, I'm gonna go over all the parts that we're gonna be using for this project. Here's everything that we're gonna be using for today's project. Now, if you followed my channel for a while, a lot of this stuff's gonna look very familiar to you. That's because I used a very similar kit on my Blue MX650 back when it was a 48 volt setup. This is a MY1020 brushless kit by Kunray, and it's rated for a thousand watts, which is a lot less than what's on my bikes, but this is plenty for this quad. This Tesla Cyber Quad is only rated for 500 watts and it's using a 1016 brushed motor. So it's definitely gonna be an upgrade. I'm really hoping that the bolt pattern on the motor bracket is the same or similar. Otherwise, we're gonna have to do some modifications. So this kit comes with a 30 amp, 1000 watt brushless controller, chain and sprocket set, which we're likely not gonna be using for this setup, hardware and tool kit, a twist throttle with a built-in three-speed switch and front and reverse. User manual, a junction block for the phase wires and the power wires, a keyed ignition switch, and another three-speed switch, which we're likely not gonna be using. I'm not really sure if I'm gonna be using this because he does not want me to drill into any of the factory panels, but we'll find out. And if you are interested in checking out any of the items that we're using for this project, I will have everything linked in the description below. All right, let's get started on the disassembly. There was definitely an unnecessary amount of hardware holding the two plastic covers together on the rear axle. There were nine total screws holding these two things together. But now that we got the covers off, we can take a better look at the drivetrain. It is certainly a lot different than what I'm used to with the MY1020s. I wasn't expecting there to be dual tensioners on here and this fat chain, along with this gear reduction housing with the huge front sprocket and tiny rear sprocket. I also wonder if this changes the rotation of the shaft since these motors, I'm used to working on bikes with it mounted the other way. I wonder if that also reverses the direction. So I might have to wire the controller switch backwards for forward and reverse. We're gonna have to experiment some. Just using a five millimeter Allen socket to remove the motor mount bolts from the bottom bracket.
Here's how the motors look side by side. You can immediately tell that the Kunray motor casing is significantly larger than the original one. If we ignore this gear reduction assembly up front, and I don't think I can use this sprocket on this motor though, it's gonna be way too much load. So we're gonna have to experiment with the gearing some. Hopefully I can use this tensioner assembly with some modification on the new motor. Uh, one thing that I was concerned about was the motor mount bolt hole pattern is definitely much wider on the new motor versus the original one. So we're gonna have to definitely drill the swing arm, but we're gonna have to figure all that stuff out when we position this new motor on the swing arm exactly where we want it with a chain alignment. But before we spend too much time modifying the bike to fit this Kunray motor kit, I wanna confirm that I can get this motor to spin counterclockwise at full speed. So I'm gonna hook everything up temporarily and test the reverse function. So I just made a temporary power supply cable to connect the battery to the controller so we can test this out. I have an inline 30 amp fuse in here and then I have ring terminals on one side to connect to the junction block and then ring terminals also on the other side to temporarily slip into the ports in the battery. Now this is temporary. I already have a CX50 battery connector for this thing. It's just not gonna be here for another week or so. So we are just using this for testing reasons. Please do not do this at home. Here's how everything hooks up together per Kunray instructions. Power source and ground hook up to red and black on the controller, and then everything connects together on this junction block that's provided with the kit. This is where all the big wires go, such as the phase wires. All brushless motors, doesn't matter if it's an RC motor or like a big QS motor, have three phase wires. They're usually green, yellow, and blue. Just match them up, and then there's a five pin Hole sensor connector coming from the motor, just connected to the matching connector on the controller. And then there are three separate connectors that hook up to this specific throttle since there's three separate functions on this one. The first one's the obvious twist throttle, one is the speed switch, and the reverse switch. And each Connector is already labeled from factory, so it should be pretty easy to figure that out. And there is a keyed ignition over here. These four connectors, or these five connectors, we're not gonna be using. Two of them are for the brake lever switch. So if you have like a Razor MX650 and you hook these up to the factory brake levers, it'll cut power to the controller when you apply brakes. And then it just sends signal to a brake light and then this one's just a charge port, but well, we're not gonna be using this since the Tesla battery has its own charge port. And then one wire that I might be using is this indicator light. Since the Tesla quads have these factory LED headlight and tail lamp set, so I might make it work with this. I'm gonna test this out if this puts out 12 volts. So let's turn this thing on, test it out. All right, standard speed. So as you see, it spins clockwise, not counterclockwise like it's supposed to. So if I go in reverse, it spins counterclockwise, but not as fast, you can hear it. And then even on a faster setting, slower setting, the reverse mode is fixed. So we're gonna have to figure something out as far as potentially swapping out the wiring to 
reverse the polarity to make it spin the other way. I'm gonna have to do a little bit more research. After reviewing some wiring diagrams and experimenting with a couple different combos, I was able to figure out how to reverse the polarity and the direction of this MY1020 motor. Starting with the phase wires, I left the green going to green and then I switched yellow and blue. You'll see it's mismatched. And I tried turning the controller on and twisting the throttle. The motor looked like it was trying to go counterclockwise, but it was fighting itself and was making a bunch of whining noise inside. So I looked further into it and I saw someone online switch the yellow and green wire on the hall sensor connectors on the motor side. So you see it's mismatched. So those are the only two wires that I switched. I just depend it with a picking tool and Confirm, forward, middle setting, much higher speed now going counterclockwise. And if I go in reverse, it goes clockwise. So that is how you reverse the direction of an MY1020 motor. And here's a simplified diagram showing what I did in case you wanna pause the video. Here's a general idea of how I'm planning on mounting the motor. I'm thinking about drilling new holes on the motor mount bracket instead of mount modifying the plate on the swing arm just to keep as much of the Tesla unmodified as possible in case we change the setup in the future. And I think the biggest challenges of this build is certainly gonna be the battery connector. I ordered a uh, 3D printed CX-51 from China that's supposed to be bolt onto this. We'll find out that comes in in about a week. That's gonna be the last step of this build anyway. Uh, and then the other big challenge that I'm going to have to figure out is the sprocket sizing. Whether or not I'm going to go with a larger rear sprocket and keep this small one up front or put a larger one up front and make this one work, whichever combo. I'm definitely going to have to shorten the chain some and then figure out how I want to mount the tensioner, whether or not I want to copy the original style that bolts on the cap of the motor. But I want to stare at this some more before I just start modifying things. Right now, I'm just way too distracted about this box that just got delivered by FedEx. And I am anxious to unbox this thing. If you enjoyed today's video or found it helpful in any way, do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you like this kind of content, want to keep up with some of my projects or some of my builds, consider subscribing to this channel. But this is going to be it for today. Thank you for watching.